Sure, Disney World is all magic and wonder on the surface, but what's really underneath? Well, we're gonna dig a little deeper to expose a few things you might not wanna know about Walt Disney World. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. Now some folks don't believe this, but Disney World is actually part of the real world. And it's good to remember that as you're planning a trip to the most magical place on earth. Today we're gonna talk about a few not so magical things you should know before you go to Disney World, and a few things that you might not wanna know, but you know, you can't look away. We're starting out with some things you never see, but are always there. And we're gonna start that section of this video with wildlife. Yeah, we're not talking about Disney's Animal Kingdom though. There's tons of wildlife, snakes, gators, big old spiders, and other critters that are having a fun time in Disney World right next to you. Yeah, Disney World occupies swampland in Florida, so pests are quite common, though Disney works around the clock to keep them from invading your vacation as much as possible. Alligators are prevalent in Florida water, whether that's a swamp, pond, lake, or sometimes even a swimming pool. If there's water in Florida that's left alone for long enough, a gator will probably find his way into it. Now these animals are dangerous and they do live on Disney World property despite Disney's efforts to keep them away. So to protect yourself from these guys, stay away from ponds and lakes in unpopulated areas. Disney lakes in very populated areas are now fenced to keep guests from wading or swimming. But there are some ponds and lakes that are next to roads or in less populated parts of resort hotel grounds that are not fenced. These areas do have warning signs, however, so you're gonna wanna keep an eye on those. Next tip for gators, don't go swimming. Basically anywhere except your hotel pool or water parks or places where you are supposed to be swimming. And keep your wits about you if you're boating as well. Now spiders are very common in Florida and some are venomous. So keep an eye out for those as well, especially if you're staying in a condo on the beach or something like that. I haven't seen too many big spiders in hotel rooms, but they do exist in Florida and they are something to watch out for. Palmetto bugs, these are cockroaches. They're common in the the southeastern United States and Disney World is no exception and these can be huge and they can fly. You'll find these just about everywhere. I've seen several on walkways and resort hotel areas but once I had one crawl up my leg while I was driving and it nearly caused an accident. They are harmless though so just take a deep breath and move on. Like I said you can see them everywhere but you don't see them all the time. So if you see a big old brown bug that's what it is. All right, snakes. Snakes find their way onto Disney World property from time to time as well. There are over 35 species of snakes in Central Florida, but only six are venomous, according to my way too in-depth research about snakes in Florida. And no, I don't ever want to research snakes in Florida again. Thank you very much. So by the way, is it weird that every time I type snake, I mistakenly type snack? Hazard of the job or a subconscious desire to expand my palate? You can be the judge. Anyway, it's unlikely that a snake, snack, you come across on Disney Disney property will be dangerous or venomous. But after my 11 minutes of snakes in Florida or snacks in Florida, whatever, research, I'm gonna stick with this advice. If you see a snake in Disney World, don't take it with you as a pet or let your kids play with it. I mean, that's just mean anyway, but there's a one in six chance that you end up in the ER. And that's not a cool way to spend your Disney vacation, not least because you already spent thousands on this trip to Florida and you don't need an ER visit bill on top of it. So just leave the snakes alone. All right, love bug seasons. Not sure what love bugs are? If you go to Disney World during love bug season, you're in for a big surprise. This happens for a few weeks in May and September. That's mating season for love bugs and they are everywhere. The biggest issue is them landing on or around you when you're dining outside, though they don't wanna eat your food, they're just prevalent. And your car will get absolutely covered in dead love bugs during a drive. But in spite of those annoyances, they're completely harmless. And moving on to birds, so many birds. Beautiful cranes and egrets and adorable baby ducks. They're lovely to watch, but don't engage with them. Please don't touch them. They're not animatronics or characters, even though they're on Disney property. They are wild animals, and Disney doesn't want you to feed them, even if they walk right up to you. Because these birds can be aggressive, especially around food locations in Disney World, because they've learned that humans will feed them. And in truth, feeding them is unhealthy for them in several ways. The food isn't good for their system, and they learn the wrong forage lessons and therefore can't feed themselves if something like a four-month closure due to a pandemic occurs. So let birds be birds, don't feed them human food. All right, next thing you might not want to know about Disney World, basically no matter what you do in Disney World, it is probably on camera. Yeah, it's no surprise that Disney World has some serious security, but a lot of it is robotic and never sleeps. 
Okay, true. I don't know if they turn off the cameras to sleep at night. I don't think cameras need to sleep. But Disney has surveillance cameras in merchandise locations, on rides, and in queue lines. Ride cameras are mostly for your own safety. If you stand up on a moving ride, especially a dark moving ride, without being able to see the structures around you, you could get hurt or even dead. And you could hurt others in the process. So yes, ride cameras also do let cast members monitor for some activities that may not be acceptable in public as well and if you try that you'll likely be escorted from the park when you disembark the ride but mostly they're concerned for your safety and for that of other guests haven't seen the cameras on rides look for the little red lights on the ceilings also disney world has lots of plain clothes security throughout the parks disney's even watching you in non-electronic ways like in real life human ways throughout the property disney has placed plain clothes security guards to keep a literal eye on everything these folks can apprehend baddies quickly and are prevalent in the parks, and some accounts even note that there's a security guard in tourist garb in every single shop. Hopefully that makes you feel safe and not weird, but the next time you look around Disney World, there's a very good chance that one of your fellow tourists is actually there to keep you safe. All right, our next section of this video is threats you never think about. Now, Disney World has closed due to hurricanes several times in recent years, so let's talk a little bit about that. That is something you want to know about if you're planning a trip to Disney World. We've got a couple of videos on the channel that talk about that exclusively. Hurricane season is a lot longer than people think in Florida, June 1st to November 30th. So you could end up with a Thanksgiving hurricane. Those storms are a lot more likely during peak season, which is August and September. Disney World's closed seven times because of hurricanes, usually only for a day or two as the storm passes. And since Disney isn't right on the coast, the parks typically don't experience too much damage due to the storms. But even losing a day of your vacation can be a big inconvenience. So head over and watch our Florida weather videos, our Florida hurricane videos, and also check the blog for hurricane tips. We've got lots of information on there about what you can be refunded for, what you need to put into place before you go during a trip like this in terms of trip insurance and stuff like that, because there's always a rude awakening if a hurricane is on the path to hit Florida and people are trying to figure out what to do about their Disney World trip. So it's not the first time people have been through this before and we've reported on it. So we've got all the details for you over on Disney Food Blog. All right, the next thing you might not want to know about Disney World in terms of a threat you had no idea was there. Did you ever notice that you actually have to open a door to go into restrooms in Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park? Ever notice you don't have to do that in any other park? They just have those open doorways. Ever wonder why? Well, it's actually a safety measure. Those doors are there and can actually be locked and bolted in the case of a real life animal stampede. Yep, just in case any of those menacing anteaters escape, you can take refuge in the restroom in Animal Kingdom, lock the door, and stay safe. It sounds silly, but that is the real reason why those doors are there to keep you safe if animals escape. All right, next thing you may not want to know about Disney World, I know a lot of people get a little bit miffed when we tell them this is where their food is really coming from. So a lot of your favorite treats in Disney World are actually not Disney treats. They're totally mass produced by a third party company and you can get them in your grocery store, which kind of takes the magic out of them. But if you look at the silver lining, that means you can get your favorite Disney treats in your grocery store. <laughs> okay, let's talk about a couple of my favorites. Mango pies, mini mango pies. You know what? Yak and Yeti and the Yak and Yeti counter service restaurants in Animal Kingdom, they have those amazing mango pies and at the counter service they have the little mini mango pies and the little mini chocolate pies well those were my favorites for years and years and then one day I was in the Kroger here in Texas and I saw a mini mango pie and then I remembered a reader had once written to me saying she'd seen one in her Publix and sure enough I bought it and it really tasted like the same thing so I started to do a little bit of research and it turns out that those pies are made by a company called Kenny's Pie and you can buy them in your local grocery store for $1.99, which is a lot cheaper than you can get them in Animal Kingdom, by the way. So if you want to stock up on mini mango pies, one of my favorite treats in Animal Kingdom, you can absolutely do that right in your hometown a lot of the time. 
And another one of my favorite stories about Disney food not really being Disney is, of course, Dole Whip. Now, many people associate this pineapple soft serve with Disney, but there's nothing Disney about it. The mix is actually made by Dole, and it's just like any other soft serve mix. You just add water and you churn. There's tons of flavors. You can get the classic pineapple at several chain stores around the United States, like Menchie's, and you can even buy the mix online and make it yourself in an ice cream maker at home. You can buy lots of the different flavors of Dole Whip. So if you want to have a Dole Whip party at home, you can absolutely do that. And it tastes just like the real thing you get at Disney. Also along these lines, things you might not want to know about Disney World is that many Disney World restaurants aren't run by Disney at all. Most restaurants in Disney Springs and many in the parks are run by third party companies and literally don't even have a Disney exec involved. These include restaurants run by the Patina Group, which are Morimoto Asia, the Italy restaurants, the Edison in Disney Springs, several restaurants in downtown Disney over in Disneyland, and of course, Space 220. That will actually be a Patina Group restaurant as well, not run by Disney. The Landry's Restaurant Corporation also runs several restaurants in Disney World, Rainforest Cafe, T-Rex, and of course, Yak and Yeti. The Mexico restaurants are not run by Disney. They are run by a third party company out of Mexico, and they also run the restaurants over at Coronado Springs Resort. And then of course you go to Disney Springs and you've got Paradiso 37, Terralina Crafted Italian, Paddlefish, Boathouse, Raglan Road, Chicken Guy, all third party owned and operated. And really, I think the majority of the restaurants in Disney Springs are not run by Disney. So I'll have to do the comparison there and figure out if it's the majority, but I do think it is. So just heads up on that. Some of your favorite Disney restaurants aren't even Disney. Okay, the next thing you might not want to know about Disney World is what goes on underground and backstage. You know how Walt envisioned Disneyland and Disney World as a big show with everything guests see happening on stage and the rest is happening backstage? Well, there's a reason they don't want you going backstage. Just like in any other show, there are some things happening back there that might ruin the magic you're experiencing when you watch the show. First up, tons of trash. Disney collects over 150,000 tons of trash each year. Two miles of tubing under Magic Kingdom, where the underground tunnels for cast members exist, transports garbage at up to 60 miles per hour to their sorting facilities. And cast members we've spoken to have shared that there are parts of the Utilidors that smell awful because of it. Luckily, we as guests don't often think about how much trash is produced or what it inevitably smells like down there, but Disney has pledged to cut down on single-use plastics, so maybe there will be a reduction. Also backstage, broken attraction vehicles and things not looking their best. So while what we see on stage is often neat and spiffy with a perfect paint job in tip-top condition, when things break or need cleaning, they often go backstage or get taken care of at night. While the illusion is maintained during the day that Disney World is a magical place, behind the scenes and at night is when the real magic happens making sure everything looks as bright and shiny as it was on day one and in good working order as well. And then of course, something else that happens backstage, cast members being normal humans. Yeah, Disney works hard to maintain a consistent demeanor and decorum amongst their employees, but people are people and backstage is where cast members can let loose a little bit more than they can on stage. And nope, they're not all dining at a Royal Banquet Hall on the Utilidors underneath Magic Kingdom, but they can get a Subway sandwich. Ever wonder why Google Earth shows a Subway sub shop in the Magic Kingdom? It's not on stage, it's underground. A quick way for cast members to get a meal on their lunch break. Next thing you might not want to know about Disney World is what you're missing. Now, Disney World is constantly changing. To paraphrase Walt Disney, the Disney parks will never be finished. But I'm not going to gloss over the fact that many of us miss bygone rides and attractions. Horizons, World of Motion, Mr. Toad, Kitchen Cabaret, and so many past iterations of rides that still remain in operation today. Leave a comment on this video with your favorite Disney World ride that we just can't ride any longer and maybe we'll make a video out of all of those. And of course there are the rides that never came to be. Things that we can't ride because they were just never made. There were plans to build a Thames River Cruise ride in Epcot's UK, which looks like the perfect place for a nap, honestly. Three potential rides for the Japan Pavilion were once slated that included a bullet train simulation ride, a coaster-esque attraction where you ride a bullet train and get torn in half by Godzilla, and a Mount Fuji coaster, which would have been so cool to see on the Horizon of World Showcase. And we might have gotten to ride a giant baby stroller on Baby Herman's runaway baby buggy themed after Baby Herman, who you all totally know, right? From Roger Rabbit? Yeah, okay, maybe that's why they didn't make this ride. But if you don't care that we missed out on that one, how about the Great Muppet 
movie ride, a spoof of the great movie ride helmed by the Muppets themselves, once slated for Hollywood Studios. Are you jealous yet? But if you don't care about Muppets, maybe you do care about dragons. Everyone knows the story that Pandora, the world of Avatar, was originally supposed to be Beastly Kingdom in Disney's Animal Kingdom Park. And it was supposed to be a land themed after mythical creatures. When pressed for time and budget, though, the Animal Kingdom execs chose Dino Land to get the remaining park budget over Beastly Kingdom. And they built Camp Mini Mickey in that area instead. Well, in addition to a Fantasia themed boat ride, we were also supposed to have a dragon themed coaster in Beastly Kingdom. And the concept art looks amazing. So yeah, maybe you don't want to know what you can't ride in Disney World right now because those things fell off the drawing board. And of course, we're DFB, so let's talk about food and restaurants that have been discontinued. For those of you who haven't tried these items or the hundreds of other discontinued menu items in Disney World, be sure to hug your favorites tight tonight because you never know when they'll be cut from the list. I've just chosen five things that our readers have talked about missing so much from the parks. And these are all from various times in the past 50 years. First up is that pork shank from Gaston's Tavern. This was only around for about a year, maybe a couple years. There's a giant hunk of pork meat. <laughs> not a bone that you would get at Gaston's Tavern in New Fantasyland. Kind of a first cousin to the turkey leg, right? Well, that one was quickly taken off the menu. Something that I miss desperately are the beaver tails in Canada. This was actually run by a third party Canadian company, which does still run shops selling fried beaver tails in Canada. No, they're not really beaver tails. It's fried dough with tons of different toppings. So delicious. The Figaro fries at Pinocchio Village House are a long, long, lost snack for folks. These were fries topped with tons of toppings. And actually, if you used to love these, you can go to the Plaza restaurant and get the Plaza fries that are very, very similar. So if you need to scratch that itch, you can go ahead over to Plaza Restaurant. Over at Liberty Tree Tavern, I loved the Tavern Fried Cheese, which was an appetizer on the menu. They have stopped serving it, but it was one of my favorites. Basically just fried cheese curds, but much better than any other fried cheese on property. And if you guys remember Enchanted Grove, which of course is what became Cheshire Cafe over there next to Mad Tea Party, they used to have something called a strawberry swirl, which was a lot like a citrus swirl over there at Sunshine Tree Terrace. But this one was almost like a frozen st tart strawberry instead of the frozen orange juice. It was really, really good, but unfortunately it's been gone for quite some time. And of course we had to say goodbye to a few actual restaurants in the past as well. Many in fact, but here are two recent cuts that we hope will R.I.P. Pleasure Island, Adventurers Club. Everybody loved the Adventurers Club. Little bits and pieces of it are coming back in places like Skipper Canteen and Trader Sam's, but it's just not the same. And then of course, a lot of families are missing Mickey's Backyard Barbecue. This one was kind of a victim of COVID-19, but I think it was pretty much off the docket before the parks even closed. But sadly, that outdoor restaurant in Fort Wilderness has been discontinued. Now, the next thing you might not want to know about Disney World is, of course, the reality. And we do try to touch on this a little bit here at DFB Guide because we think it's really important for you to think about this before you go to Disney World. You're spending so much money and you want this trip to be perfect, but remember, nothing's perfect. So you gotta sort of plan ahead and be ready for some things to go a little bit wrong. It won't always be fun. Your family will drive you crazy. Someone's gonna get sick. You won't get on every single ride. You'll miss a reservation. You'll wait what feels like forever for transportation. And it'll be hot, sticky, sweaty, and not magical sometimes. And and that's why we do what we do here at DFB. We don't want to scare you, but we do want to temper your expectations a little to make them more realistic. That's why we always advise to build in rest days and to escape the parks in the afternoon for a nap or a swim. Disney is demanding physically and emotionally, and a lot of us aren't used to that. And we get much more depleted than we expect and much more depleted than we're prepared for. So go into your vacation with a generosity of spirit for your family and for yourself. Don't try to do everything and have your short list of priorities that once you get those done, everything else is gravy. And that's the best way to approach a Disney World vacation. So there are a few things you might not want to know about Disney World. Some of them I hope were helpful so you can plan ahead. And some of them maybe are just weird trivia that you can dazzle your friends with. But now it's time to head out to your grocery store, buy a mini mango pie, and get back to planning your Disney World trip. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.